Hello guys, welcome again to the CS Core and Network Fundamentals course. In this video, we are going to talk about the network structure. So that upon completion of this lecture, you will be able to. You will know the structure of any 2G networks consists of Jaren access, connected to either CS Core for voice, or PS Core for data sessions. While 3G networks consists of UTRAN access, connected to CS Core for voice, and PS Core for data session. We will learn the function of each node in those network parts in details now. Let's have a general look about a mobile network structure. You will see here the UE can be connected to the 3G or the 2G networks. If he is in a 2G coverage area, he will connect first to the Jaren, which is the 2G radio access part, and if he will make a voice call, he will connect with the CS circuit switching network. While if he will make data session, he will connect with PS packet switching network. This is in case of 2G networks. If the user is in 3G coverage area, he will connect first with the UTRAN, which is the 3G radio access part, and the same core like 2G, where CS for voice and PS for data session, this is just a quick general view about the network structure. Let's now start talking first in details about the Jaren access part. Jaren is the 2G radio access part. Jaren is an abbreviation for GSM Edge Radio Access Network. It consists of BTS and BSC nodes. BTS stands for Base Transceiver Station. From the word transceiver, we can observe that this node is mainly considered with sending and receiving signals with the user equipment. BTS main function is the coverage of the cell so that any UE roaming in this cell is covered by the BTS. By another meaning, the UE is connected to the mobile network through this BTS. Of course in any GSM network we have many BTSs to cover the whole PLMN area. BTS is used to control the radio interface between it and the UE, and monitoring the signals transfer from it to the mobile and vice versa. It has the radio equipment required for sending and receiving signals, such as transceivers and antennas. It is used in encoding and encrypting data before sending it in the air interface to the user equipment. This is the base transceiver station. Now, let's talk about the BSA base station controller. BSA is the main controller node in the Jaren. We can say that BSA is the smart node which takes the decisions, while BTS is the stupid node which obeys all these decisions. BSA is used to control all connected BTSs together, and to transfer the data signals received from the BTS by UE to the MSC. It is also used in taking handover decisions for any user roaming under its controlled BTSs. This means that if the UE moves during a call from one cell to another, under the same BSA area, the BSA is the node which controls this handover process. BSA is also used for assigning radio channels for users, or if the user needs to make a call or registering to the network, he will need to have a radio channel to carry this process. This radio channel is assigned by the BSA. It is also used in collecting cell data like LAI location area identity and power of the BTS. The BSA decides whether to increase the power of the BTS or decrease it according to the distance between it and the user equipment. If they are near it will decrease it and if they are far it will increase it of course. It is responsible also for the frequency hoping process, where if a user call is handled in a bad frequency channel, the BSA takes the decision of moving this call to another frequency channel. This is the BSA node. Attached to the BSA there is a unit called PDU Packet Data Unit. The main purpose of this unit is to allow interconnection with the packet switching core by doing some rate adaptation processes. That's for the Jaren nodes. There are two interconnecting networks with the Jaren. The CS networks to allow users for making voice call. And the PS network to allow users for making data sessions. Now, let's talk about the UTRAN. UTRAN is the radio access part in 3G networks. 
UTRAN stands for Universal Terrestrial Radio Access Network. It consists of two main nodes, the node B and the RNC. Let's start first with the node B. Node B is equivalent to the GSM BTS, where its function is cell coverage, and it is the first contact with the user equipment. It performs the air interface processing like channel coding, rate adaptation, spreading, synchronization, power control. It has an extra function than the BTS, which is participating with RNC and resource management that the user uses in his sessions. It also has radio equipments like transceivers and antennas for cell coverage. The other node in the UTRAN is the RNC. RNC stands for Radio Network Controller. It is equivalent to the GSM BASA, but of course with some enhancements, as the BASA is PCU unit attached in it for PS interconnection. While RNC doesn't need this unit, as it had the capability for doing this function itself, RNC houses radio network control functions, such as connection establishment and release, handover, power control, and radio resource handling functions. It is also used in connecting all node Bs together. Control the radio resources in cooperation with the node B, as we said in the node B functions. It is the direct interface with the core networks, whether with the CS networks, in case a user needs to make voice call or with the PS networks, in case the user needs to make data session. So this is all for the UTRAN part. Let's now talk about the core part. As we said before, core in 2G, 3G networks is divided into CS core and PS core. We will start talking about the CS core. CS core is the network used for enabling voice call service for the subscribers so that any 2G or 3G mobile network must have a CS core in it for enabling its subscribers to make some services like voice calls, SMS, and interconnection with other mobile operators. CS core consists of many nodes. The main and the most important one is the MSC server and the media gateway. We said in the previous lecture that MSC is split into two nodes, MSC server and media gateway. Let's first talk about the MSC server. MSC server is the most important node in any circuit switching network. If you are going to any core interview, of course you will be asked about it. MSC server is in the control layer. We had explained this in the previous lecture. It is responsible for all the signaling messages that passes through the core and access network. MSC server has all call control functionality by switching mobile phone calls between subscribers. It does not process the payload, or by another meaning the traffic of the subscribers, as this is the function of the media gateway. MSC server contains all call and service control logic, such as B number analysis, charging analysis, and bearer selection. Of course all these functions will be discussed in details in the upcoming lectures. It has the handover process functionality, or when mobile subscriber moves from MSC coverage area to another MSC coverage area, the MSC server is the node which controls this process. It also helps in the paging process, as we know paging is done when a subscriber needs to call another subscriber, so that the MSC of the second subscriber will receive a call notification coming to the subscriber attached to him. Once he receives this call notification, it will send the paging message to find out where this subscriber located so that he can receive the call. MSC server has the control functionality of all the elements around it. We can consider it the big boss who gives orders so that it controls the BSAs and RNCs in the access networks for different purposes like resources allocation and call management. It also controls the media gateways in the core networks and determines which media gateway can handle a certain call, and then it orders the media gateway to allocate the required traffic resources for a call to be done between the two subscribers. It has many other functions in mobile services, like mobility management in case of location update. It also handles the authentication process between the user equipment and the HLR and authentication center, as well as handling the registration process of a user to the network. 
Finally, MSC Server also has inside it the VLR functionality. VLR stands for Visitor Location Register. It is an internal database inside the MSC Server, where the MSC stores subscriber data and profile inside it. It stores information like subscriber identity, current location area of the subscriber, all the supplementary services assigned for the user, and current activity of the mobile user, whether he is idle or not. This is all the functions of the MSC server. Now let's talk about the Media Gateway. Media Gateway exists in the connectivity layer, where it provides connectivity with external networks and access networks. So it is the direct interface for traffic transport between the core and access networks. As we mentioned in the split architecture, MGW is the node which handle and transport user traffic. It is used in bearer allocation, as when a call is going between two subscribers, it allocates a bearer with the other media gateway for the call to pass on. It has some incorporate auxiliary functions, like echo canceller, DTMF and rate adaptation. Sometimes media gateways act as a signaling gateway, where instead of getting another separate node for this function, MGW can do it. Where it can interface to external networks that do not support call and bearer separation. It has also the other function that SGWs do, is to convert signaling between SS7 over IP, to broadband SS7 to narrowband SS7. MGW makes IP, ATM and TDM transport possible in the backbone network, with other core nodes like MSC or with access network, or with external networks. That's all for the media gateways. Let's now talk about the HLR. HLR stands for Home Location Register. It is a centralized database that exists in any mobile network. Its main function is to store subscribers' data, including their whole profiles and the supplementary services assigned to each user. Let's have a look on some of the data exists in the subscriber's profile. First one is the MSISDN which is the subscriber number, and also we have MC which is the unique identity for each subscriber, and finally LAI the location area identity. HLR is totally different than the VLR, as HLR is a database for the whole network, while VLR is a database for a specific MSC area. VLR is a temporary database where subscribers can move from it to another VLR in another MSC. HLR supports also in some of the mobile services, like authentication process, where HLR provides MSC with the authentication parameters for each user to decide whether this user is authorized to access the network or not. It supports also in the location update process by providing the MSC with the subscriber profile and all its services. It has some call management as well, like advising MSC of the calling number with the MSC location of the called number. That's all for the HLR. Then we have the GMSC which is the Gateway MSC. It is the same node like MSC but the only difference is that it is mainly configured to be interfaced with external networks, as no connection with external networks can be done without its permission. GMSC hide the layered network architecture towards external networks, then we have the SMS Center. It is network node responsible of sending and receiving SMS messages between network users. It has many functions, one of them is identifying text format, as we know SMS is about text, so before sending the SMS from one user, the text format must be identified first. The second function is that it is used in pending functions, where SMS Center can be used for storing SMSs until allocating resource to carry this SMS to the user. You must know that the priority of the resources are for the voice calls first, then to the SMSs. Accordingly, the pending function is mandatory for SMS transfer. The other node we have here in the CS networks is the EIR. EIR stands for Equipment Identity Register. It exists in the application layer. EIR is a database used for mobile equipment where each mobile equipment is identified by a number called IMEI. 
it is used in classifying the handset if it is white list, black list, gray list. White list if the handset is OK, so it can access network normally. The black list means this handset is not OK, may be stolen, and it will be prevented from accessing the network. That's for the EIR. Let's now talk about the FNR. FNR stands for Flexible Number Register. Its main function is to keep customer MSISD and identity the same when changing service provider. This means that, when a customer decides to cancel his subscription with Orange, and he needs to subscribe with Vodafone, he can have the same MSISDN used in Orange. This is called FNR feature. So this is the overall CS network structure, where we have covered all the nodes in it. Now we had reached the end of our chapter. See you in the next chapter.